So hello everyone, welcome to the module 2 of our discussion in event-driven programming, IP19. So this is actually the continuation of our previous discussion in module 1. So this time we are going to discuss the swing controllers and the swing containers. And more on this video, we are going to discuss the J checkbox and the J radio button. So now, what you can see here on my screen is actually I have created another project file which I named it as module 2. So I've skipped some of the parts so we can move forward with our discussion for this time. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is to demonstrate the creation of J checkbox and the J radio button. And to do that, the first thing that we are going to do is to create a uh, J frame form. And let's name this as main. Okay, so this is actually an empty form already, but before we dive into it, let's just check if it's working just to avoid errors in the future that would arise. Let's say it's true, then uh, it should output an empty uh, frame for our program. Okay, now, now it's not working. We're moving forward by creating the different components. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do is to uh, test the checkboxes. So what we're going to do here is to create a label to indicate the checkbox. Okay, so let's just rename uh, this or change its property in order for us to see uh, it in a better setup. So let's just click properties. So it should be somewhere here below and I'm not actually sure what happened why it's detached but Let's just make use of this one. So right-clicking this one, let's say 24, then bold. Okay, so next thing that we're going to do is to add our checkboxes. And to do that, what we're going to do is to drag and drop our checkbox. So let's fix this one to have a three options. One, this one, and the last one, okay? Now, the next thing that we're going to do is to replace the name of our checkbox. Let's say it's option A, followed by the option B, and then option C. Okay, so just in our previous discussion, we have identified that the difference between a checkbox and a radio button is that checkbox can be toggled multiple or dozen of times. So here you can see that I was able to select three options at a time. Okay, so but before we move forward, what we're going to do is to also replace the name of this one to its properties, the property tab. Okay, so to replace this one, let's just replace this by option A for easier uh, browsing. JBox2, let's say option B, and followed by this one, option C. Okay, so the next thing that you're going to do is to replace its name or just to indicate that our uh, checkbox is working, let's just have a control output. So let's say another, let's copy paste this label and let's replace this by output. Okay, so then let's use another label. Let's drag and drop it here and then let's replace the uh, variable name to jlabel output check or check output check out okay so let's just remove the value for this one and I think that's it so another thing that we are going to consider here is another event that I also want to uh, consider so the first thing that we're going to do is whenever there are different action that has been performed within the checkbox, there's actually an event what we call action performed. So action performed deals with if there are changes in the behavior of the, uh, of the UI. So for instance, you can see here that it become unchecked, checked, unchecked, checked. So that's actually an action performed. So, in order for us to capture if uh, this is working, let's just click this one and left click to for it to produce. Sorry, for it to produce a action performed event. Okay. So now, 
since we already have an event that checks if there has been an action that has been performed, the next thing you're going to do is to check or to add a condition whether the checkbox has been checked or not. So to do that, we are going to use an if statement followed by the this operator. Then we're going to look for the J checkbox, option A. Okay, so here's what's become tricky is that how are we going to check if the checkbox has been uh, toggled or checked? So we're going to use a dot operator. There is actually a method that what we call is selected. So this is actually, you can see here the description on the browser here, returns the state of the button. True, if the toggle is button is selected, false, it's not. So whether it returns a Boolean, so it will be, the value of this one would be true if the checkbox has been checked. And if it's not, it doesn't, it returns false. Okay, so the next one to do is to create an empty brackets here to set a condition of what we are going to do. But before adding a condition here, uh, let's have here a global variable just for the sake of output. So let's say string check output is equal to, okay, so because we are going to concatenate this string later. Okay, so the next one we are going to do is to call that global variable variable here. Then let's say check output is equal to or plus equal option A. Just to indicate that when an option A is selected, it would concatenate a string and then output this one on our J label. Check out and go. Let's set the text within. Then we are going to. Add check output in that means it automatically creates a function for us okay now let's test this one if it, this works okay so this should have an output option a below okay so it works so in option b and c there is not yet actually a result here so it continuously uh, concatenates the string so Later, let's add also do this the same on the different options. Same goes with option B. Let's just replace a few of this one. Let's replace this by B. And this would be, and this one is for C. Okay, now. Let's check if this works. Okay. So there has been an, a few errors. So let's just add a space here so it doesn't uh, conflicts. Okay. And yeah, let's just this code again. So you can see here that it should output C, B, and A. Or you can also do it reversely. Okay, so that's what's actually happening here, that whenever you check uh, multiple outputs, you can also add multiple values within it. So that is actually how a checkbox, checkbox is used. But this time, we're going to show the difference again when it comes to the radio buttons. So unlike checkboxes, radio button must operate in such a way that only one option is selected. And to do that, we are going to create here a uh, on our existing form. So let's just leave these things behind. And we are going to create for our radio buttons. This is where it becomes tricky. Sometimes radio button acts as a checkbox when it's not properly set. And I'm going to demonstrate it to you right now. So let's say here and then here. Let's say this is a mail. And this is a female. And by definition, we know that only one answer should be selected when we are using radio buttons. So when I click this one, you can see here now why is it that both of this option has been selected, meaning that there has been a, configura uh, a configuration error. And for us to be able to resolve all of those things is we are going to create a uh, what do you call this? Button group. And we are just going to drag it up here. 
Okay, so nothing happens. For now, nothing happens. What we are going to do here right now here is to click mail. And we are going to group these things to the button group that we have placed. And, and you can see here on the properties tab, you can see here that there is a button group option. So we are going to select this one. And then we are also going to select this one. The reason why we want to indicate the button group is the group is for it to be able to identify which part of the group is the radio button. So now we hope that it will only select one. Okay? Now you can see here that the radio button acts as it is stated on the definition of radio buttons. Okay? But this time we're also go going to uh to mimic the behavior of this one so that the radio button can also be used or to see if the uh, code is working. Let's say here, oops, let's just copy and paste this one. And then the next one is to also add a label here. Okay, so here. And what we are going to do right now is to set the value of this one to JLabel radio out. Okay, now uh, we are going to uh, add here a button that since we use here an action, um, a different type of event, but this time we are going to use a button here to also demonstrate to you how different uh, components can also be used in different setups. So to do that, we're going to drag here a button which indicates a submit. Uh, sorry for the design, but just bear with me for a time since we're just learning uh, the different components. So let's say submit. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to add a code here, G button. Submit and remember in our first discussion that we can click this one Okay, so the next thing that you're going to do is to output if it's a male or a female So to do that is once you select the J button It would automatically go to the to this output. So to do that is we're also going to create again a condition if this J read your button one oops i wasn't able to replace the name let's just replace this one to mail and the second one here is the female okay now let's go back so this j radio button mail and it actually has the same operation operator like in the checkbox is selected then we are going to output here the, what do you call this, uh, this, JLabel, read to out, and let's set the value, oops, set text to mail is selected. Okay, so another thing, we can also do if, another if, this Read your button. Say is selected. We're going to output female is selected. Okay, so now let's run this one. It's this should be this should work. So male. Male is selected, and then when we hit female, female is selected. That is how, actually, that's how you use uh, checkboxes in radio button. There are different implementation for this one, but these are the common thing of how you're going to implement uh, this component. So in the radio button, you can also do the implementation in checkbox, but in checkbox, you can also do it how a uh, button implements the component so that's it for this discussion and we'll be having another discussion regarding the j panel and j forms on our next video